that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as a John Cusack, like most of his characters, is an unconventional hero whose work spans over three decades. He first came to fame in the 80s as a teen idol, but has since immersed himself in film roles that really suit his unpolished everyman persona. In the 80s, John earned a place in the brat pack of teen stars such as Emilio Estevez, Molly Ringwald and Charlie Sheen. He made his first feature film debut in 1983 in the romantic comedy Class and never looked back, scoring himself a lead role in the movie renowned for its boombox serenade scene, Say Anything. Cusack made his mark playing affable but slightly neurotic characters, but he's never been limited to any one genre thanks to his diverse acting ability. I think one of the primary criteria of being a movie star is that you're watchable. John's that guy who can play humor, sarcasm, black humor, funny, uh, pathos, sadness, all the things. So he's like this great acting tool for the director to go, OK, how about this? On screen and off, Cusack can be quirky, even as a US Marshal in the action flick Con Air. While some action stars may rave about the explosions, stunts or effects, for Cusack, it's the footwear. It was, it's smarter and more ironic than your average action film. It's got better characters, it's better written. And I wear sandals in it. So I'm the first post-Heston, non-biblical man in an action film. I mean, sure, there have been biblical men in sandals in an action film, but non-biblical post-Heston, it's me and that's it. I'm number one with a bullet. His offbeat sense of humour and comic style has seen John attracted to projects and roles that mirror his sensibility. And it doesn't get much more obscure than playing a frustrated puppeteer who stumbles across a portal into the brain of actor John Malkovich. I can definitely relate to, to that and feeling like, you know, you, you can't quite tell the difference between, you know, your uh, illusion and reality. Fascinated by all facets of the filmmaking process, John has several writing and producing credits to his name. Preferring to work with those closest to him, John co-wrote Gross Point Blank and High Fidelity with his childhood friend Steve Pink. He also often collaborates with his lifelong pal and former roommate Jeremy Piven, imitating reality in the romantic comedy Serendipity. And John and I have been friends forever, so if we can't play best friends, then I need to go into roofing, literally or start making sandwiches for the crew because, I mean, that's kind of what we are, and so we should be able to play that, basically pimping out our own friendship. No need to join the caterers just yet, Jeremy. John has proven himself playing the boyfriend and best friend alongside some of the world's most beautiful leading ladies of romantic comedy, Julia Roberts, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Kate Beckinsale. I think that's the funny thing, is that sometimes you can get on really well with somebody, um, and almost that's used up in your own relationship with them. Um, and on screen, it's not that interesting. So it's one of those things that other people kind of have to tell you, oh, it's working really well, which fortunately, after you know the first even day, everybody was really excited about, about the chemistry um, between us on this, which was, which was lovely, which was nice, because I got on with him really well. John has the ability to provide a sense of normalcy for the audience, keeping them grounded while navigating through extraordinary plots. John brought some of that realism to the haunting horror film 1408, playing a novelist who locks himself into a notoriously haunted hotel to write his latest project, only to get a taste of his own fiction. The mythology of it's pretty cool because it's haunted with the spirit, but it, it, it uses what you bring in with you from your past. So you start to see visions, but it's all stuff that's happened to you and it's maybe half true and then it mutates. and. But it's all, it's, it's like it's attacking you with the stuff in your mind and soul. So that's pretty fun. And again, in CGI fueled disaster flick 2012, John played the role of the everyman trying to protect his family as the world literally falls down around him. Acting through this global cataclysm gave John some insight into why people are so captivated by the end of the world. People can, you know, visualize the worst thing happening, some sort of release of their fears. So if you have some sort of collective psychic worry about, you know, global warming or nuclear war or any of these types of things, or um, uh, then when you see it happen, 
maybe there's some sort of release that comes there. Um, and I think also kind of huge government conspiracies, those things. I mean, they all sort of get your imagination going, but I don't know why people love them so much, but they, they do. What people also love is a good old fashioned comedy. So John put on his togs and got ready to return to the excessive 80s in the oddly named Hot Tub Time Machine. I said, well, wh what's, the, what's the comedy? And they said, Hot Tub Time Machine. And I started laughing on the phone. And then I met with them. And uh, it was just one of those things where you, you know that it's kind of the greatest, dumbest, weirdest title that I'd ever heard. It just made you start laughing right away. So uh, I'm, a lot of people say, if you can get a movie, if you get a great title for a movie, the movie actually will write itself. <laughs> so that was what we were hoping. John not only starred in this time warp romp, but also took on the producing duties. He managed to recruit fellow Aethys star Chevy Chase, whose blunt and unique brand of humour became a standout in the film. I've always thought John was unusual and uh, good, a good actor, an artist. And I've always wanted to work with him, but I, I never thought it would come about necessarily. Now we're talking about other stuff together, so it's nice. Coming back to the thrillers, John flew into the classic work of Edgar Allan Poe's film version of The Raven. This showcased John's dark side and led to the unfamiliar territory of playing a death row inmate in The Paperboy. So how did he feel about playing the villain? I felt like I'd been let out of some cage somehow. Um, and, um, you know, um, when I met with Lee, he had... Um, we sat and talked, I think we were at the Chateau Marmont, and he just sort of was looking into me like saying, I know you got more to give than you've been given lately. And, um, you know, that's sort of music to an actor's ears. So I was a big fan of Lee's, and uh, I think as soon as we met, we, we sort of developed our language where we, we were, we, I, I knew instantly I wanted to do the role. Over three decades, John has had a diverse career. But one common trend is his collaborative relationship with fellow actress and older sister, Joan Cusack. Working in over 10 films together, Joan had this to say at John's Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony. But he is so deserving of this distinction to me because of what he has done with what he has. He is a star to me because he cares deeply, not just about the power of fantasy and escapism. We all need that but adding to the conversation of reality too, and even truth in romantic comedy, which he does so well. John is a star. There's magic in him. Who knows where it came from? Passion for what he does. I think he himself is part It's a Wonderful Life, part Dr. Strangelove, and part Charlie Brown's Christmas. And it's the many parts of John Cusack that combine to create his engaging on-screen presence. He often plays the everyman caught in extraordinary circumstances, which is what sets him apart from other actors and makes him so relatable to audiences and a popular box office choice. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love, broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.